Hey guys, it's Cam here. Welcome back to the build room. And in this week's episode, we are back working on our 1998 R34 Nissan Skyline. And today we're gonna to be throwing some stock parts back in the engine bay to help it go a little bit more under the radar. And then we're gonna give it a full birthday, throwing a whole bunch of fluids, parts, and everything else we need to make sure it's gonna be nice and reliable as a daily driver. So stick around and check it out. All right, so we've got a lot to get through today. And for that reason, uh, we're gonna change the format of this video slightly. Normally you guys know I like to put a lot of detail into my videos, make sure you guys know everything about what I'm doing and all of the pitfalls and problems that I run into. Um, unfortunately, that's gonna make for a really long episode. So hopefully this episode will have a runtime less than 20 minutes. And what I'm gonna do is some of the more common items I'm gonna do at a high level in this video. And then I'm gonna have separate videos that we might release as in-betweeners down the track that show you how you go about changing the spark plugs on an RB25DE or uh, dropping the coolant, flushing the radiator, that sort of thing. And that's gonna help us keep the length of the video down a lot. So we do have a list to go through. Uh, we are going to do the diff oil. We're gonna do the cat swap, and that's because uh, the, the exhaust makes this weird rattling sound as it sort of rises through the rev range. Um, I've had a look around, nothing seems to be loose. I have a feeling it might be something in the cat, either stuck pre-cat or a problem with the cat itself, so we're gonna swap that out. We're gonna do fuel filters, spark plugs, flush the cooling system, oil and filter. Um, we're gonna then refill the cooling system with um, new coolant, replace the hoses, put a new thermostat in, put the stock airbox back in and put a new filter in that one. Uh, we're gonna put the stock bracket and engine cover on for that stealth OEM look. And then we're gonna throw a new boot seal on to stop that leak. And we'll also check to see if those struts that I showed you in the last episode are actually gonna fit on this thing, hold up the boot and deal with the weight of the spoiler. So yeah, uh, like I said, a lot to do. I'm gonna start with the stuff under the car first because I feel like uh, that's the one you're the least motivated to do. So get it out of the way early. So let's jump under the car and have a look at what we're dealing with. All right, so we're starting at the back of the car because I want to get the diff draining uh, and I'll leave it to drain for a while so we can get all the fluid out. The drain plug is right here. It is a half inch square drive and the fill plug, uh, if you can see it, let's see, uh, it is in there. All right, it's a little bit harder to get to. Um, you can just take these out with the square end drive of a half inch ratchet. It'll fit in there nicely. Um, on the side plug, you might need a knuckle to get it past the rest of the stuff. So first thing we do is get a drain pan in place and then don't crack the drain plug just yet because if you crack this drain plug and drain all the fluid and then you can't get the fill plug undone, then you are in a world of trouble because you can't get fluid back in here. So always make sure you can undo your filler plug first and then come around and do your drain plug. That's moving. All right, so we're draining into the pan. For those of you that are not aware of the smell of diff oil, it is truly a odor to behold. All right, so we're gonna leave that to drain for a while. If you wanna speed things up, you can drop the back of the car, but I need to work under the middle of the car for now, so I'm just gonna leave it as is. All right, so onto the cat converter. Now, the reason why I'm a little bit suspect on this thing is it looks pretty good along here. In fact, it looks like it's either been treated with something or it's been painted before. But if you look down this end, See how there's a double weld on the end here? That I do not think is factory unless this thing was built on a Friday. So yeah, my concern is that someone has straight piped this and they've not done a good job and that's why it rattles, but it's really hard to tell. I could pull this off and it could be fine. The only way to figure it out is to rip the thing out. And we have a spare one here, so we might as well give it a shot. Oh, it's tight. Oh, all right, it's gonna drop. And we got our cat out, and then, all right, what do you know? What does that look like to you guys? Hello! Captain D-Cat strikes again. Uh, that would explain why this thing sounds like a bag of ass, or at least I'm hoping it explains why it sounds like a bag of ass. Um, and we're gonna get a proper cat in here and do things the right way. 
throw in new mounting hardware and new gaskets. All right, that's a problem. You can see that is not lining up at all and yet we are bolted in down that end. Now I have checked to see that the cat is the right way around. In fact, I've tried it both ways, but it does not want to fit, which would explain why this one has two welds down there. I reckon, yep, you can see the line inside. They've cut this off and then re-welded the flange on on a different angle to match the exhaust. Obviously they're probably just trying to do whatever's quickest and easiest, but why the hell would you not chop the end off your garbage exhaust? And this thing is garbage. It's an absolute mismesh. The hangers and the welds and everything holding this thing together is pretty horrid. <sighs> so they should have cut it there and then welded that on properly, which is now what I'm gonna have to do. All right, that was fun. Let's see if it made any difference. All right, so it seems to have taken some of the low end out. It's not significantly quieter, but it does feel like it's a little bit uh, more higher pitched. Uh, hopefully that means there will be less drone when I'm driving on the road, but I won't know that until I get it back out there. So let's move on. Uh, I'm gonna get cleaned up in the meantime. All right, so all cleaned up now. Uh, look, I gotta say, if there is a hell, you can guarantee it is filled with dudes trying to weld in very confined spaces above their head. That absolutely sucks. I can understand why people love having a lift so much. Anyway, it's done and dusted now, so let's check out what else we've got to go here. Now I wanna replace the fuel filter down there with the new one that we've got. Uh, you have gotta be careful when you're working on the fuel lines, they will be under pressure. So we're gonna depressurize the fuel system and to do that, what we're gonna do is start the car with the fuse for the fuel pump removed. So there'll be no pump, the car will consume the fuel and uh, we'll be left with nothing in the lines or at least no pressure in the lines, there'll still be fuel in there. And so to do that, the uh, fuse box that you want is the one in the driver's side footwell, so let's have a look at that. All right, and for the second week in a row, I am jamming myself into an R34 footwell, but um, accelerator pedal here, uh, just next to it is a lift off panel. In there is the fuse box and here is a list of all of the fuses. And that is super helpful because they're all written in kanji, I think. Katakana, kanji, I don't know. I can't read Japanese anyway. So anyway, that is the fuses there. And I believe the one we're looking for is a 15 amp fuse in the first row. All right, go on. And then this time it should run like garbage for a short period of time. That one more. All right, so that now has no fuel pressure. So pretty safe to work on. All right, so with the pressure relieved there, we can now get our new filter. That is the part number there. All right, so 
the fuel filter will be in a clamp. You just pop it out. Hopefully there's a little bit of hose. Yeah, there's not much, but enough. Uh, basically so that we can push it around and get to the bottom clamp. And then still a good idea to have a rag and just put that around the hose as you're taking it off. That way, if there is any leftover pressure or anything like that in there, it should go into the rag and not into your face. <clears throat> just gonna use the old plier trick on that hose again, just to try and crack the seal. All right, with that seal cracked, that came off really quite easy. So I'll move this around to be upright so it doesn't dump fuel everywhere. Get our new one in. Now we can take the top hose off. Same deal, break it with pliers if you need to. There we go. Whoop, damn it. <laughs> Wipe some of that fuel up. Fuel filter on. Pop it back in its clamp and uh, she's good to go. All right, so now I'll just throw the fuse back in the fuse box and then I'm just gonna turn the car to the on position so that the fuel pump will prime. And then I'm gonna come straight out and I'm gonna make sure that this thing isn't leaking because I don't wanna try and start this thing if we have a fuel leak. All right, don't know if you guys can hear that, but you could basically hear um, fuel pushing through these lines. So we should have fuel pressure now. There's not really any need to fire this thing up just yet. So let's keep on moving. All right, the diff oil will definitely have drained by now. So I can fill that up and get that plug back in. But while I'm under there, I also wanna start the oil draining in the engine. Um, we'll do the coolant after that. Uh, but yeah, for now, let's get the uh, oil drained and then I can come back up here and start on the plugs. Uh, I am going to drain this thing cold. Now, there's a couple of schools of thought here in terms of uh, how you should drain the oil on your car. Some people say hot, some people say don't be crazy hot, at best warm, and then other people go for cold. I'm kind of in the cold basket unless I'm in a real hurry. Um, cold oil, yes, it takes longer to drain, so you just leave the plug out longer, it's not a big deal. But you're not going to burn your hands up trying to uh, get the sump plug off and then getting oil all over your hands. And for the rest of the stuff where I have to work around the bay, I don't want a hot engine in there as well, making me hot and then burning me whenever I try to get my hand down to something that's hard to reach. So we're gonna drain this thing cold. We're just gonna give it a little bit more time to drain uh, and then we'll get the plugs back in and topped off. And there's a lot that's gonna to have to come off to get access to those plugs. But yeah, let's get under the car and get this all draining now and then we'll come back to this. And all we're doing here, oh, open that up. Cold oil, I don't have to worry about burning my hands here, so no gloves required. But I do want to make sure that I catch the oil and don't get too dirty. Okay, so we're going to let that drain. Um, tip to getting this to drain quickly, um, cold is okay. Make sure you remove the oil cap on top of the engine. That way you're not creating a vacuum and slowing down that oil speed. We've got a new washer on the sump plug. Now the sump plug is supposed to be between 29 and 39 Newton meters. So we're going to shoot for about half of that. There we go. That's not particularly tight at all. We definitely don't want to thread it. All right, now we have to change the filter. Now the filter is not the easiest thing to reach. It is on the side of the block. Um, and the cross member and the steering shaft and knuckle on that is really kind of in the way. So um, I think the easiest place for me to try and get to this will be from up in the bay, reaching down. All right, counterclockwise, this one seems actually pretty loose, so that's good. Just turn it around, and it'll unscrew off. Now it's gonna start leaking oil, so I'm gonna jam a cloth in here. If you guys can't see, I apologize. Okay, take the filter off and keep it upright, and you'll minimize your leaks. All right, so that's our old filter. 
uh, super cheap auto one SC0145, right? That's all right, I've got the proper Nissan one to show you in a second. I'll put this in our oil pan to drain. Leave it hanging there, and then I can clean up my hand. All right, so new filter, uh, it's a genuine Nissan one. That is the part number there. Just gonna grab the bottle that we've got, pull some out of the inside of the cap, and just rub it around that ring. That way, hopefully next time we go to take this off, it'll be nice and easy to remove. All right, I'm gonna put the new filter down in there. It's gonna be a exercise in calisthenics. There we go. Now I'm just gonna jump under one last time and use some degreaser to clean all the oil off the block that will have dripped out of there while I was messing around with the filter. All right, so oil. I am using Castrol Edge uh, 5W40SN. Um, the, I think the spec oil for these is 5W30, but that's for the Japanese climate. So in Australia, I'm gonna run a 5W40 just to give it a little bit more in that high temp range. Now the oil capacity for this one is supposed to be about 4.5 liters, I think. Um, but you always check with the dipstick, right? We are covered there. Pull our funnel out. Oil cap back on. All right, so with the engine oil done, uh, let's get back under the car and we'll do the diff. And for that, we're gonna need some Permatex Gray. All right, so this is our sump plug. Um, basically the plug and the hole that it goes in are self-tightening. So even though there's no sort of flat part to the end of this bolt, um, you're not gonna be able to do it all the way up so it pokes through into the diff. Excuse me while I get oil over my finger there. Because it doesn't have that flat surface where you could have a crush washer or something like that, we just put a little bit of sealant and Nissan recommend ultra gray, which is a high torque sealant. Put a little bit of that around the bolt. Just pop that back in. Again, always finger tight on this sort of stuff. You wanna make sure that you're not threading it or cross threading it rather. So the torque setting for this one is 48 Newton meters. There we go. I'm not gonna bother cleaning that up. Don't care how it looks, just care that it seals. Oops, and it seems I have done myself an injury. Bit of glass in my hand. Now to get to that fill plug, there's not really good access to get anything in here to fill with. So the easy way to do it is that we just get a length of hose and we thread it on top of the suspension components just so that it doesn't get a low point. And then we can thread it into the diff like that. And then the rest of the tube here, we're just going to throw up over the wheel outside the car. Oil drain pan back in place to catch any runoff. And then with the hose outside the car, nice and high, we can set it filling from there. All right, so we're leaking fluid now, which means we're full up to here, so that should be all the diff needs. All right, get our hose out of the way. Give everything a spray down with degreaser just to uh, make sure we're not burning too much off the exhaust. All right, so I am calling that job done. All right, so we're moving down the list. We've done diff oil, cat swap, the fuel filter. Uh, we've done the oil change and the new filter there. Um, in the engine bay, really, we've just got spark plugs and cooling flush, so uh, let's get into those next. Now, in order to change the spark plugs, we're gonna have to get access to this valley here. Uh, and obviously, the intake setup, throttle body, and this section before the plenum are in the way. So I'm gonna get all this out of the way first. I'm not gonna go into detail on that. You can see it in the follow-up video. But yeah, let's get this out of the way and see what we're dealing with underneath. All right, and now you can see all six of the coil packs. We've got pretty good access to that now. We just have to, uh, for the back ones, we just move this stuff around, move it back and forward so we can get access to them. And if we disconnect the loom on one, you can see that there is a couple of 10 mil bolts on either side. Undo both of those bolts and the coil pack should slide out. 
We're going to start with our number one plug. All right, that's our coil pack. All right, and you can see down there, that is our spark plug. Now, before we go pulling that out, the one thing you want to check is you want to make sure that there's not a bunch of oil or water or anything that's sitting in the top of that plug area, because otherwise when you pull the plug out, obviously anything that's in there is going to fall down into the engine. So drop nothing in this hole throughout this entire process other than a spark plug should come out pretty easy. Um, you shouldn't have to put a lot of pressure on this stuff. If you do, I would highly recommend having a good look at things to make sure that it's not cross threaded or something like that because um, you wanna be very careful with spark plugs. If you mess them up, the head's gotta come off to fix them nine times out of 10, which you don't wanna do. But take your time and uh, don't force anything and it's a pretty safe job. Now this socket, this is a spark plug socket with a bit of rubber in the bottom so that hopefully it will pull our plug out with it. All right. And that there is our spark plug. Now the plugs that I'm putting in are just an NGK uh, BPR6ES-11. Now the dash 11 is the factory spec gap. So 11 represents 1.1 millimeters. If it was a BPR6ES-6, it would be 0.6 mil gap. Now this is just a standard plug, just an average ordinary plug there. The one that's coming out, I think is a platinum, I would say, or something like that. All right, so we've got our feeler gauges here. I have a 0.5 mil and a 0.6 mil. So combined, they are 1.1 mil in thickness. And yeah, you know, that one is pretty damn close. So yeah, factory gap, maybe a little bit tight, um, but good. All right, so like I said, we've got a piece of rubber in here that holds the plug in place, which is nice. It just allows us to drop it nice and squarely over the hole. So we'll just get it finger tight. All right, that's bottomed out finger tight. And then I just throw a quarter turn on it. Now there is a torque setting for this. The actual Nissan spec for these uh, is 20 to 29 Newton meters. So very light, finger tight in a quarter turn. But just to show you guys, there we go. You definitely don't want to do these up too tight um, and you want to be able to trust your torque wrench. Just put our coil pack back on the top. Tighten those up. Now I'm not going to use a torque wrench on them because, well, quite frankly, this is an NA motor. We're not talking about a high precision race, race engine here. We don't have to do torque settings for everything. Cool. So that's in. Uh, now we just hook our loom back up. I'm not going to do that because I'm going to take these next six out. But uh, yeah, I don't want to show you one by one. So we'll just do, go through that quickly. All right. So we are interrupting this regularly scheduled programming because this thing has just gone incredibly pear-shaped. Um, yeah, let's take a look at it. So, we have first, second, third, fourth um, plugs and coil packs back in. Uh, the sixth hasn't been done yet, and then the fifth is wide open. Why? Well, that's a long story. And it involves me breaking my cardinal rule here, which was to make sure the valleys are clean. So I don't know, I must've just had a brain fart or something. I did check, or I thought I checked the valleys. And I think what I've done is been in a hurry and a little bit lazy and I've checked um, down the valley and the first four cylinders looked really quite clean. Uh, and then I've kind of just gone, oh, well, they'll all be like that and just moved on with my life. Unfortunately, when I've pulled the fifth plug, as I've pulled it out of the valley, I've noticed a bunch of debris in and around the spark plug hole. So I grabbed the Dyson out and I vacuumed as much of that out as I possibly could, but there was so much of it so close to the spark plug hole, I can't be confident that there's now not some of it in the engine. And the stuff that has come out looks like a very hard ABS plastic. It could be an old gasket that's hardened up over sort of 10 or 15 years and gone very brittle and ended up in that bay. It could be broken off parts of a uh, coil pack or something like that. 
I don't know. But at the moment, it is not something I'm comfortable just reassembling and then starting this motor and hoping that it's nothing that's gonna destroy a cylinder if there's something in there. And that brings us to this little guy. So we have my laptop here um, and we have a little camera on the end of it. So yeah, you can see in the screen behind me, um, it's a tiny little camera with an LED ring around the top and that is gonna go down the ball and we're gonna see how we're looking. So do me a favor and keep your fingers crossed that this is gonna show nothing. All right, so we've got the camera in the valley, we'll find the spark plug hole here and make our way into the bore. And you'll be able to see what should be a piston. I'm not sure how this is gonna come up on the screen for you guys, but you can see up there, there's a couple of fly cuts for the valves. You can even read the rego number here on it. And you can see at the front of the piston, you can even see the dot, which tells you the, where the front of the engine is. So when you put these pistons in, they have to go um, pointing a certain direction. That's the dot that shows you how. There's also a two there and a G6B or GBB or something like that. And that dot there, um, that represents the center of the piston. And <sighs> that is not a good sign. That is a piece of plastic. Um, I mean, we can also see 5L705 on the piston, but the main thing there is that you can quite clearly see that we have got some debris down that bore. The problem I'm gonna have here is that that material is a plastic, so it's not magnetic. If I dropped a, I don't know, a small washer or a bolt down that hole, um, I could throw a magnet down there and pretty easily pick it up and drag it out of the hole. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do here. I think I'm probably gonna have to get the camera in there with uh, some wire and maybe some double-sided tape or something on the end of it um, and just try and stick it out, I guess. Yeah, I'll start with some wire. We'll see if we can do an operation where I've got the camera down there and I can see what I'm doing. If I can just pick it up and then take the camera out and then pull it out through the hole, we'll be in luck. Um, if not, we're gonna have to come up with a plan B. I mean, it is a plastic. I could leave it in here and just fire the thing up and send it. But to be honest, I don't know whether that's gonna do damage or not. It's definitely gonna do more damage than if it wasn't in there. Um, and you know, if it's an ABS or something like that that doesn't break down easily with heat, uh, it's gonna get pinged out through one of the valves. If one of them closes on it or something like that when things are in the wrong timing, I could do a lot of damage in there. So. Yeah, I don't know how much a risk this is, to be honest. This is not something that I do regularly, but um, yeah, I don't wanna risk it. I wanna try and get this thing out. All right, so here I've got, it's actually um, a part of a engine stethoscope um, that you use to find uh, knocks and rattles in engines. And I've just put a little bit of blue tack on the end of it. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get that in, get the camera down past it, and then uh, move around, pick what we've got up, pull the camera back out, and then hopefully the plastic with it. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so you can see going down through the bore here, trying not to touch the sides. All right, and I've got it in and yeah, the piston's about halfway down, so we've got some distance here to cover. Let's see if I can get the camera in on the side. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna happen. I think that with a metal rod in the bore, that the camera then won't fit to the side of it. So you have to pull this out and go back to the drawing board. All right, so now I've got a much thinner piece of, uh, this is just wire. Um, the problem with this is it's obviously quite flexible, but maybe that will work to my advantage. So I've got the camera in now and I can see the piece there. And I'm just gonna see if I can get the wire down past it. We should have enough room. No blue tack or anything on this one. and I'm just gonna hopefully be able to move that debris around. With the idea being if I can get it to the center of the bore here, right on top of that dot, I might be able to then put the wire down on top of it with the blue tack and then suck it out again. All right, so you can see I'm right behind it there. Let's see if we can give a nudge. It's a bit hard here because you're working in three dimensions. I can't tell whether this wire is right on top of it. Oh, there we go. Starting to move. It's not the easiest thing to position. But slowly, slowly, slowly. It's also dragging on the piston, so it's kind of wanting to just flick off at any moment, shoot that thing across the uh, top of the piston. Very close. And here's where it's getting 
tricky. I just can't move it the way I want to. Yeah, see, just trying to flick there. I might need to bend the wire a little bit or something, but, oh, hang on. Yeah, I uh, missed it. This is uh, keyhole surgery at its finest people. Quality TV. All right, oh, power save. Oh, damn. All right, we're back. All right, nearly there. Come on, a little bit more. There we go. All right, I think, I think I might stop pushing my luck there. I reckon that's close enough to give it a shot. Let's get that other rod back with the blue tack on the end. All right, uh, all right, so I'm not gonna get the camera in here, so I'm gonna be flying blind. All right, we're touching the bottom now. I, I can't really feel anything. I'm just gonna sort of poke it around a bit without making sure I try not to touch the sides again. All right, nothing on it. At least we've pulled the blue tape back out. It's not down there as well. But um, that's a bit blind. I'm gonna try something else. I don't think that's gonna work. All right, so I have made a contraption on the Dyson. Just a couple of hoses going from uh, bigger to smaller. And hopefully, we're getting a bit of vacuum on the end there. It's not much, but that piece of plastic shouldn't be very heavy. So let's try it and see. All right, so I've taped the uh, hose to the metal stethoscope again, just so I can control it a bit once it's in the hole. Slide it down through there. All right, we're in, give it some berries. Uh, pull this out, I'm gonna leave it going to keep the vacuum all the way up. I don't think it's big enough to go up the hose. Uh, nothing, nothing doing there. Hang on, try that again. What is that? Ah, look at that. Yeah, oh, all right, that's dropped. Um, all right, uh, that piece of plastic is on the ground somewhere. I don't know where it is, but it looked pretty big. It looked like it might have been the whole piece. Um, but just to be sure, I've taken the, um, uh, the stethoscope piece off the hose, and I'm just going to flex this in now and just get it really around and just vacuum up as much as I can. We'll see if anything else comes out. Look at this. There we go. And I've really just got to do this by feel, or actually probably just randomly, you can't feel much on the end of that hose. We'll give it a bit of time. All right, and now we'll, um, I guess we'll check it with the bore scope and see whether there's anything left in there. Kill this light again. All right, so looking around, well obviously the big piece is gone, which is a good sign. Just want to check on top of the piston and make sure that there is nothing else and around the edges, around the ring landings and stuff like that, just to make sure it didn't break up and sort of just deposit itself randomly around the uh, bore. And that looks pretty good, to be honest. All right, I'm happy with that. <sighs> All right, the terror is subsiding in me right now. Um, I feel like we've got that nice and clean. Um, everything's out. Uh, look, I don't know whether it would have caused damage or wouldn't have caused damage, but hopefully it is out now. I just need to safely get a plug into there um, and then uh, change out the number six one as well. And uh, then we can start reassembling this bad boy. All right, that should be good enough to test. Uh, I'm gonna reconnect the battery now and then try and start it. All right, fire in the hole. That sounds pretty damn smooth. All right, that's uh, obviously on cold start, so it's idling pretty high, but, um, uh, and I don't wanna run it too much because I've got the garage door closed because it's about a million degrees outside and in here the aircon is pumping, keeping things cool. So yeah, with that done, I'm gonna do the cooling system stuff off camera. 
Um, you can see that in another episode. Uh, and then we will come back and we will get the OEM uh, air intake filter and snorkel in. Okay, so it's running sweet. The coolant system has been fully serviced and as you can see, uh, fully bled. We've got a new thermostat in, radiator hoses, fan shroud and cap. The fluids have been topped off and all of that new stuff is starting to bring this all together. It's still hot, uh, but once it's cooled down, there's a few more stock parts to go on and complete the look. So yeah, I'm just gonna let this cool down and then we will throw the rest of it back together. All right, so first things first, got a freshly painted bracket. And I actually got new uh, rubber seals because you can see whoever bolted these up, bolted them off center and they're sideways. So brand new rubber. <laughs> All right, now it's time to remove the old pod filter intake. Just gonna get this whole thing out of the way. All right, and then we're gonna get the bottom half of the air filter housing into place. All right, now I have to get the OEM snorkel in, but I've just realized, uh, for one, we're gonna take this off and shift it to the side, but there's normally two plastic pressing clips that go through the uh, front of the snorkel here and they've been snapped off in there. So I'm just gonna get these out first. We just move the carbon can. And then with a little bit of room, should be able to slot this in. All right. And then with any luck, some of my existing trim clips will fit. All right, that's looking pretty OEM. Now we've got a new Nissan air filter. Uh, once again, that is the part number there. It's just a panel filter and it just drops straight into the top. Now we needed to take the old uh, intake resonators and airflow meter and attach it to the OEM box. Uh, I'm gonna use the airflow meter that's come off the car because I know that one works. The car was running fine on it. This is an unknown quantity, so no point introducing an unknown right now. So yeah, we're just gonna go. All right, so that's together. And before I put that on and cover up all the access that I need for the rest of the bolts, it's time to get the bracket for the engine cover on. Start with this side. And then our other side. All right, so now we should be able to slide this into position for the final time. All right, clip this in place. That's where it needs to be. Do up these hose clamps. All right, we even got that little uh, 10 mil bolt there to bolt the resonator onto the bottom of the air intake. And that just leaves us with this little guy here. And our intake is in very good shape indeed. I'm liking that. All right, and now it's time for a very special OEM part that I've got for this, and I really think, it took me a while to track down, I really think it's gonna make the build. Um, and this is it. That's right, it's an oil seal for the filler cap. Wait for it. Oh, 
Hot diggity dog. Correct amount of OCD on that one. Man, would you take a look at that thing? I'm getting misty. All right, we are on the home stretch. Bear with me. Uh, there is two things left to do. Firstly, uh, a lot of this stuff just needs a general clean up. It's got a lot of uh, dust and oil and stuff on it. So gonna give that a full clean. And then I'm gonna put this thing on, which is the engine cover. Now I want this to have the gravitas of a full OEM build. So we're just gonna click it and we'll see you on the other side. Oh yeah. Say it with me, almost OEM. Man, that is definitely under the radar. I'm so happy with how that's come out. We'll get some glamour shots of that in a second. Um, in the meantime, let's look at the list. We finished our spark plugs and we did the cooling flush, coolant, thermostat, airbox, and filter. Engine cover, tick. And that just leaves boot seal and struts. But with all the things that have gone wrong today, um, I am leaving the struts and the boot seal until next time. So yeah, uh, how did today's episode go? Well, let's talk about it while we have a look at some glamour shots of the engine. All right, so I am not gonna lie, this one was an absolute mission. What started out as an episode that was just gonna be a quick service on the car, get everything buttoned up, get everything looking stock and we we're good to go, uh, ended up needing a bore scope, a welder, a bunch of different parts and a whole world of effort, including laying on my back in a cramped space for a very long period of time, which nobody likes doing, but I can't argue with the outcomes. I'm absolutely stoked with this. I think it's at a point now where I have a fairly reliable daily driver. Uh, I still have to get the aircon regassed. Obviously, I couldn't regas it until I checked that that heater core seals, and then I'll get that bad boy gassed up and we'll be good for the rest of summer. So yeah, I'm not sure what we're gonna do in the next episode. It could be more 34 content, or uh, maybe work on some of the other cars, maybe one you haven't seen before. But for now, I don't know when you guys are gonna see this episode. There is like 30 hours of footage for me to go through and edit, so I'm not looking forward to that one. Um, but we'll leave it there. I'll give you the standard spills, which are, if this is your first time to the build room, you should check out the full Violet Crumbles build, which I'll put up here, and I'll put a link to the Do For Now series down here. Other than that, I just wanna say thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time on The Build Room. Bye for now.